Om Shanti, everyone. Welcome back to Ek Malakat. I'm your host, Sister Jenna, and we are having the most enriching, exciting, powerful conversations with friends from across the globe, especially from the United States of America. We've started off talking about the experience of coming into India, into the land of Mother Bharat, and what it is that India has taught us, and what is it that we could perhaps offer to India. So I hope you really took a time to listen to our special guests that actually spoke about their experience visiting India for the first time. I took so much from that conversation. And today we also have returning guest, the wonderful and beautiful Angela Holton, um, a life coach, author, inspiring speaker, and also the founder of lovesanctuary.com. And also joining us for the first time is Pastologist, which is also some, this, it's someone who does psychology and ministry. Yes. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. yes. Thank you. You are welcome. Dr. Terrellyn Curry Avery. We came together on the America Meditating Radio Show where we had a heart to heart conversation about life. Today we want to go deeper into some of these discussions because one of the most provocative and perhaps the simplest solution to life is to find a way to get along. And these two ladies have techniques that can help us today. So welcome. Welcome, welcome. to our Thank Godlywood you. studio. Thank you, Sister Thank Jenna. You. It's good to be back. Welcome, because as you know, we have done over 225 episodes already. We're doing something new where we're capturing the voices of the West in India to be able to help all of humanity to find some solutions to life. So today we want to talk about relationships. Oh, Lord, relationships. <laughs> Jeez. You know, it's funny because it's the same stairway you take to go up and it's the same stairway you take yes. to come down. Yes. And relationships can make you feel so happy and they can make you pull out your mm. hair. Mm. So mm. where do we begin today? Yeah. Because in America... um a lot of individuals in India consider Americans um, that they're very quick to divorce each other, that they're very um, quick to have multiple relationships. And in Indian culture, you're sort of married until death. You really do part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a lot of that is changing nowadays and against the traditional norm of the society. However, there might be very good pluses in that because why should you stay in a marriage that you're being abused mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. of tradition, mm -hmm. right? So let's talk about, um, firstly, when you even think of the word relationship, what comes to mind? What is your understanding of what relationship means? Mm -hmm. Angela, I thought we Teacher, did. relationships, and, you know, they're a mere reflection of myself. So I didn't know this years ago, but I mean, learning and discovering and, and understanding that now my relationships make me take the journey inward and discover and learn things about myself and learning how to practice non-judgment, which can be challenging in relationships, <laughs> yeah. you know, but when I practice being compassionate with myself, it helps me practice being compassionate with other people. So when I, there's a relationship that's gone awry, normally or in the past, I might have pointed fingers and blamed someone, but mm -hmm. now I've learned to turn that finger inward and ask questions to myself as a, how am I showing up in this relationship? How am I contributing to the highs and lows of it? And how can I improve and what needs to be changed within myself? Mm. I like that. So relationship is a teacher. Absolutely. Fantastic. Mm, absolutely. Mm. So it's really interesting because I love talking about relationships. <laughs> um, and I primarily, when I think about relationships, I think about three types of relationships we have. One with the sacred, who we might call God or Baba. And I think about that being the supreme yeah. relationship yeah, that we have. Too. And if we get that relationship right, if we go inward, like Angela is saying, connect with the sacred on that level, then we can work on our own stuff and we can then go out and manifest greatness in other people. Um, for me, particularly as a Christian pastor, as a part of what the service that I offer, there's a scripture that says that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. To me, that is the supreme scripture that will carry me throughout mm -hmm. any relationship because I love God, but I can't love my neighbor mm -hmm. unless I love myself. So in the work that I do with people is, is really like Angela is saying, let's look inward and see what do we need to work on with ourselves and, you know, go for it. When I came to understand the importance of purpose and service to others and my love for humanity I think for me is big mm -hmm. 
my call in waking up and coming into the Brahma Kumaris as my community that supports this call. I thought that I could just be ready to serve and that mm. I had this community to serve and, and that everything was going to be fine. I didn't really need to focus on this God. I know God is there. It's great. A few years down the road, I realized, how am I going to serve anyone if I'm not having a deep relationship with Baba, with the Supreme, yeah. that my purity vibration is increasing, that my service is true? Mm -hmm. Now, I only came to realize that like two, three years later. Mm -hmm. So you said something about if you're having a relationship with that supreme power, you can relate to others better, and definitely it's a sign you can relate to yourself. Could you both elaborate a little bit more about the connection to source, the relationship aspect to God? Because I know that in some Islamic traditions, they don't accept that you have a relationship with God. God is the creator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Christianity, then you've got Buddhism that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily speak about a God, but they speak a lot about compassion or mm -hmm. karma. Mm -hmm. What is your relationship with God, especially at this point in your life? Always looking to deepen my, my relationship. And I may speak of things that are an amalgam of different relation, uh, religions, but with my source in every area of my life. So intimacy, business, finance, health, it's my source. It's who I go to for understanding, for guidance, for questions, for answers, because I know that my source will never steer me wrong, will never judge me, will never lie to me, will never reject me, abandon me. So when I put that relationship first, which is the relationship with my higher self, for me I believe God is, I'm God and God is within me. There's no separation. I don't have to seek God outside of myself. He dwells right here in my heart. And so when I connect it with that relationship and with communication, in that relationship, my guidance comes and it shows up in different ways, in a myriad of ways. It could be a, a sign or meeting someone who says exactly what I needed to hear or a message that's downloaded that says, where'd that come from? Or a miracle or synchronicity that shows up, hmm. you know, um, right at the right time. And I know when those things are showing up that I'm in alignment with that relationship, that connection, that partnership. And one of the things I ask for every day is show me more of our partnership. Can I get some clarity on this thing? Because a lot of us say that God is in us, yeah. right? Is he in me when I'm upset, angry, yeah. jealous, mm -hmm. revengeful? I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah, because I, I believe so. Source created those emotions. So I don't think he abandons us when we are having those lower vibration emotions than when we're feeling high and joyful and gracious and full of gratitude. I think he's part of all of it and expects us to lean on him during those moments as well, because they all serve as teachers, all those emotions. And I think jealousy is one of those emotions that people abandon the most. You know, it's, oh, I'm not jealous. I, but I'm, how do we have all these other emotions, but we never acknowledge something similar to that or when it comes up and what we can do with it. And that's one of the things when I work with my clients is honor what you feel, because feelings to me are the connection to your divine self. Mm -hmm. So whatever that feeling is, experience it without judgment and experience it with compassion. I want to go deeper in that aspect because it's something that I myself personally have been learning in a different dimension. That um, the energy of the Supreme, the energy of God is very, very pure. And, and I look at it that it's like a baby when they're first born, you could see the essence of purity and peace, right? Mm -hmm. All yes, over absolutely. the vibration. And as the baby starts to grow and, and develop and get influenced by their environment, culture, family surroundings, we start to see the energy in the personality of the child changing, especially when they become teenagers, mm -hmm. oh Lord, pray, yeah. right? And they start to do things which you don't necessarily support, and you can see that innocence is lost. Then you start to see them getting upset, angry, playing games, lying and cheating. And it's almost as if the energy of that purity, that God energy, almost becomes a little bit suppressed or deactivated or put aside. I hear that, well, God is in me and I think he creates these vibrations. I, I think to myself, let me find clarity in understanding that because I feel like there is another energy existing that if I don't take care of a house, mold builds up in it and it starts to degenerate because I'm not putting any energy in it. So if I'm not putting the God energy in me and it's seeping out, then does this other energy of anger, lust, greed, attachment, ego, does that start to take birth? 
and I need to turn to my God energy to say, no, this is not who I am. Yeah. Could you help I, me with I, that? I would agree with that. The way I describe uh, really a lot of what Angela was saying is our sacred intelligence. So I believe within us, God is within us. God is not out there somewhere. As Angela mm -hmm. said, we are the manifestation of God. So what happens, and particularly as a psychologist or pastologist, as I uh, coined the phrase, I believe that we forget who we are and we forget yes. that we are divinely created and loved unconditionally. I believe that there is this outside energy that seeks to strip us of all that goodness. Well said. We see it out here in the world, whether it's media or we see it when we're walking down the street. And I believe our sacred source is saying, remember, remember who you are before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. You were with me. Yeah. And so I think that we lose that and we're called to remember that. So what I teach people to do is to tap into that sacred intelligence. So when I'm upset, so let's say we're talking about a relationship, I have to remember in each moment, and I oh, daughters, but there's one in particular <laughs> that we, you know, who, who's as a teenager. She's your teacher. You know, <laughs> she is definitely my teacher because what I have to say in that moment is, are you living your highest self in this moment? Mm -hmm. And so that reminds me to tap into the best of who I am. But if I say, forget that highest self today, the highest self is still in there, but I'm choosing to not tap into it. I think also, I mean, you're a psychology major. I also studied psychology. If you've ever spent time with babies, right, you see that a baby will cry and get angry when it needs something, angry, when, it, when it has a need that it wants met, mm -hmm. right? And babies will even bite. Babies will pull your hair will scratch. So it shows us, and they're not being influenced by, you know, feelings or pro projections or, you know, so that's, to me, intrinsic of humanity. So I believe that that's the, you know, we're a soul, but we're also human. And I think part of the human condition are those emotions. And then that child evolves and has life experiences, maybe experiences rejection for the first time, maybe experiences one of their parents or someone not reflecting love back to them in the way that they need it. Insecurity mm -hmm. is born. Doubt, fear is born. Um, the ego develops. So mm -hmm. then I think the other seeds of those emotions that we talked about unfold. But I do believe that we're born with sort of a darker shadow in a way. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I do. And I think I believe that if we're created by source, that we're both of those. You know, maybe that's always that dichotomy. We're human. We're spirit. There's good in us, and there's some things that are not so good that we constantly are working to get to that. Mm. But I think the evolution is learning how to manage those other emotions Absolutely. in a I think way that's our that journey. says, I want the best, not just for myself, but I want the best for you and the best for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, a baby is not developed. So, so it's a merging of the science and spirituality, Absolutely. right? Because when you talk about as a teenager saying, forget that, that's your you do that, I'm going to do me <laughs> over here. Developmentally, our brains are not even in full form until we're about 25 or 27. Yeah, right, right. So we have to consider all of those things as well. We're, we can't even receive that spiritual transformation, most of us, yeah, yeah, because we're not there yet. We're not developed. Well, you know, interesting because as we explore this relationship with God, um, a few years ago, I ended up listening to a class by one of our senior yogis, Sister Sudesh. The title was on, like, The Divine Connection. Can I tell you that I listened, honestly, to the class at least 80 times? Mm. And the reason why I listened to it so much is that it was so spot on, because at the end of my 79th listening of that class, I realized God was a very pure mm. energy. And it wasn't Christian it wasn't Brahma Kumaris, it wasn't Jewish, it wasn't Buddhist, it wasn't Islam. It was a pure energy that I'm being called to have a rekindling of a relationship with so I can show my best mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. who I am. And mm -hmm. I think that we're now in this culture and in this age where everything is so fast that even when I'm trying to connect to God, okay, I did my two minutes, mm -hmm, let's move on. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, how can we sustain relationships nowadays because we are getting so accustomed to doing everything so quickly with one another that even our hellos are like, hey, how mm -hmm. you doing? Hey, by the way, last night when I went back to our space, um, I met with Gracie Singh, who's an incredible 
incredible dancer and a beautiful human being. She's been in the studio here quite a number of times. Gracie and I sat in the meditation room here, and we spoke about the same thing, about mm -hmm. having meaningful interactions with one another mm -hmm. so that we can start to express a God connection mm -hmm. rather than the superficial, what we call Brahma, uh, in the Brahma Kumari's body, conscious connection, where everything is so externally driven than internally driven. Mm -hmm. So in what way can we sustain our relationship with God so that we can feel better about who we are? I think it's self-awareness and mindfulness and that con consistent meditation practice mm. and going inward and just being present. I think the more we're present uh, to our thoughts and our interactions and our engagements and we choose higher conscious thoughts, you know, we're aware, we're being mindful, right? We know how to exercise that consciousness when we're interacting with people, when someone cuts us off on the road. Not perfect, but, you know, we can exercise better choices when mm -hmm. we stay in that divine connection. And, you know, for me, my, one of my mantras and prayers each morning is to be, um, to be a beacon of light and to be an expression of God's love and wisdom and that each person that crosses my path, that there may be an exchange of love. I think what we need to do is make God a priority. And all too often, if, if we are in relationships, let's say if, if we are uh, in a romantic relationship, we want to call that person on the phone every day, and we can't wait to see how their day was, and we spend <laughs> hours talking to them. That's early on in the relationship, of course. <laughs> but we don't really do that that with God. I, you you mm. hit it right on, the nail right on the head when you said, my two minutes. If I am serious about my relationship with God, not only am I spending time with God in the mornings or perhaps in the evenings, which a lot of people don't do because you're exhausted, but it really is about mindfully moving through, to, through the day, tapping into source to say, is this of you? Is this something that I should be doing? Is this my ego getting in the way? Mm -hmm. Right? Algae, as you often talk about, right? Mm -hmm. It's really about staying just as connected as I would if I were talking to someone with whom I'm in a romantic relationship with. Yeah, exactly. If I want to talk to my husband about my kids, if something is going on with them, I'm going to check in with him. Mm -hmm. I need to have that same practice of checking in with source to say, is this the right thing to do? Or even relating yeah. to God as teacher, as exactly. friend. Right. As, that's and my favorite my relationship is friend. Right. right. God that's is friend. Where I can talk to God Anything. just like I talk Anything. to anybody Anything. else. Because if, if I can speak to God in that way, I can speak to other people, right? Yeah. In a very respectful way. Even when I'm saying, God, I don't understand this. I don't understand why I'm being guided to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, right now in the United States of America, we feel like there's a godlessness going on. And um, I personally feel that we're being called to return to this energy more now than ever before. If you were to offer any suggestions as to how we can deepen the link to the source, what would that be? I think what I would say is what I value about being here is that God is brought into your morning routine, even with exercise, yeah, or yeah. the traffic control where you're stopping just to acknowledge um, the presence of purity mm -hmm. and consciousness. And I believe in America, if we would have those moments where we can stop, regardless of whether you're, you're Muslim or Christian or Jewish or Hindu, but you say collectively, yeah. We share a humanity with one another, and it's connected to source, or for those people who don't choose to believe in a source to say, it's just pure love that radiates. I think if we can begin to do that, and if we can begin to go into leadership, can some of your decisions be guided by the love of humanity? I think we spread that love, and I, and I believe it's really important for it to be a top-down I don't know why that touched me so much. Um, something went in. Did you feel that? I don't know. Um, I've been feeling that there is a need for this to transcend outside of India mm -hmm. and to America where corporations, schools, businesses, places, malls yes. Yes. do this pausing in the day and to remember the better aspect of our humanity, mm -hmm. to be able to bring that purity back to our humanity, that innocence that has been compromised because of just life. 
But I think it's really important because one of the things that happens in America, I don't know about here, but there's too much negativity that's poured out into uh, the, the space media. that the media. And, and I believe that if we shift it and we were to talk about the positive things that are going on, because there are lots of wonderful things that are going on as well. If we started to focus on that yeah. more, yeah. then I believe that it changes the energy because people aren't walking around afraid. What if something happens to me? Or mm. I have to get you before yeah. you get me. Mm. It's mm. about, you look beautiful today. You know, I have a habit of, if I see you in the store and I ask for your help for something, I would say, hi, how are you? And it startles people. They're not used to me ask or anyone saying, how are you? And I pause to wait for them to say how they're doing. Thank you very much, Dr. Curry. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. And thank you, Angela Holton, you. for joining us. Pleasure. And you'll find some more information about them as you see scroll down beneath their names. Take care of yourselves, everyone. We always appreciate when you can join us here at Ik Mula Khat, so that you can actually rise, shine, become the bright lights that you are. It's not about dimming your light so that other people can shine but it's about amplifying your light so everyone else around you shines. Mm -hmm. Take care, everyone, and Om Shanti. Mm -hmm.